Hello, my name is Charlie Kepler. I'm an applications engineer and lead pilot here at Headwall Photonics. And today I'm going to walk you through the steps for taking your raw data after a hyperspectral mission and converting it to reflectance, um, along with generating your post process SBET, SBET GPS file, and processing your LiDAR data to a digital elevation model if you have one. Open up post pack UAV and I'm going to select new default project you can either uh, import and navigate to the file or you can drag and drop your files from your flight directory in this was a really large flight so I um, subsectioned it down into just three flight lines so that's why there's only these two files and it's going to do a bunch of stuff while it's importing those data files and here we go now we see a image of the trajectory of the flight. So the start of those TO4 files that I imported was over here. And it looks like it made it one, two, three, four, and a quarter flight lines. Um, and like I said, today we're only processing these first three flight lines. So we have everything in here that we're uh, expecting. When you import your data, it will import all of the files within that folder that you dragged from or that you selected. So if you have files from before the flight, uh, when you were on the ground or after you landed. Um, you want to move those into a subfolder called not used or something like that so that you only import the files that you want. So once you have this image here, you next have the uh, decision of which base station will I use. So either you will use a single base, which is you import your own base station uh, whether you purchase a SPS 585 base station from us uh, or you have a third party base station that, that uh, can be converted into uh, Rinex format. Um, you can import that the same way as you did before, um, which I did not have uh, a base station for this flight, but we have one that we can pretend with. So I will navigate to. Actually, I'll just drag it in you do it the same way you drag and drop or navigate to it and then here it is it popped up um, over here where this base station was located um, if you're going to do the single base option you once you import it you find it over here in this menu uh, right click it and compute RTX coordinates. And then at the end, it tells you the horizontal and vertical accuracies. And if those are within the realm of um, values that you expect for that base station, in this case, it looks like six centimeters horizontal and 11 centimeters vertical, which seems reasonable, I say yes. And then the last thing you would do would be to right click and say set base station. I'm not going to do that for this process though. Um, instead, I'm going to do a smart base, uh, which what a smart base is, is you can use their cores network system. So you can do a single cores network where you say, I'm going to select this base station and use it from their network of uh, available continuously operating reference stations throughout the world. Um, or, which is even better, is to create a virtual smart base where they take in a handful, uh, four or more of these stations, and then they create a, a virtual uh, base station at your location. So I'm going to say find base stations. And then I'm going to say smart select smart base. And it's going to look for all the base stations within this 90 kilometer range. And it's going to download all the ones that it thinks are um, necessary for creating the 
best smart base. And so this process will take a couple of minutes. If you're using the smart base function um, or the single base cores network, um, the only thing to keep in mind is that the data is not available the same day as it was collected. It is uploaded once per day, sometime overnight usually, um, up to 24 hours later. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that these stations are um, pretty regularly available in the United States and in Europe, but in some of the other regions in the world, they are not um, as prevalent. And so if you're going to be doing a collection, um, it is a good idea to check their website to see where their base stations are located and are there any in your region. As you can see here, it took one, two, three, four, five, looks like six space stations, um, and it created a virtual station he here where our flight was. Um, once I import all of those, the next thing I'm going to do is smart base quality check. And it's going to do some stuff, and then it's going to tell you should I rerun the processor or should I run it for good? So whichever one um, is has the arrow blinking next to it, you can click that. And it may take a couple iterations before it's happy to do the final process. And here we get some statistics. We're looking mostly at this fixed solution. It says 100%, so that's obviously great. Um, if it is less than 100%, that's not the end of the world, as long as you are fixed for the duration of the flight. So if you're not fixed while you're on the ground or um, while you're taxiing to your takeoff, to your uh, flight location, that's OK, as long as you're fixed for the duration of the collection. Um, and so if it's less than 100%, you can check your uh, plots. Um, the other thing I look for here is this PDOP number, and you want that um, the mean to be less than 3. So here we're uh, less than 2, so that's pretty good. And so I say OK. OK, so once I have my smart base quality check completed, um, I'm going to go into this project settings for a second and go to GNSS Inertial Processor lever arms and mounting angles. And if I look here, we see our reference to primary GNSS lever arm of X, Y, and Z. And these are the values that Headwall has entered for your system um, based on the configuration that was purchased and the location of the antenna relative to the sensor. Um, but we also have the option to auto calibrate primary GNSS lever arm. So I'm going to select that. We notice the standard deviation changes from 0.1 to 0.5 uh, for this process. And it's basically going to run and say, are these values accurate? How close are they? Do we think that they should be modified? So I'll say OK. And now that we have that set, we're going to go to GNSS Inertial Processor. And we're going to use Infusion Smart Base. Stabilize mount, we say none if you're running this with a gimbal. Um, which um, we typically do not use gimbals, but sometimes customers may. Well, you would then change it to model. Um, so stabilize mount none, and then we're going to say run. And here it did two iterations, checking the lever arms, and it says, okay, originally we had 0 0.022, and we think 0 0.047 is a better option. So, okay, we're off by two and a half centimeters. Um, so that seems reasonable. I'll accept that. Um, and why we were negative 0.19 and negative 0.10, so that's pretty close. We'll accept that. Same thing in Z, um, off by just a little bit. Um, so if those seem reasonable, I'm going to say, yes, I accept the results of iteration two. And then it's going to continue its processing with those updated lever arms.
Now that says uh, that is completed, but because we had it do the lever arms um, auto calibration, it reset the standard deviation to the default 0.03, uh, but we have been told that 0.01 is better, so we're going to reset that and then run it again at 0.01. If you're using a gimbal, you can keep it at that 0.03. And that is complete. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is go to Tools, Export, and Custom Smooth BET UTC. If you have a co-aligned, you're going to export um, as both UTC and as the standard non-UTC. Uh, the UTC version will be for the Veneer um, and the NHP, and the non-UTC version will be for the Sphere. So we're going to choose the file format. We're going to choose where we want to save it. So we'll put it in the directory with the data. And the name has to be SBET something. So we'll call it SBET export mission one dot out. I also like to usually put in the string the serial number. any other relevant info, um, and how it was processed. So smart base auto lever arms. So I click save, and that saves the location where we're going to export, but it doesn't actually save the file until we click export. So at this point, we now have our SBET. We have finished our um, processing to reflectance. And this system does have LiDAR. So we're now going to go and do our LiDAR processing. So I'm going to open up 